Hey guys, hope you all are doing well. Um, today I'm going to be doing a kind of a fun project. It's actually going to be an upgrade uh, to our minivan. And what I need to do is I need to replace the stock radio with an aftermarket radio. And the reason why I'm doing it is because um, I normally use um, a cassette to auxiliary uh, adapter so that I can stream my music from my phone and the tape deck is no longer working now and I actually use it you know a, a lot and you know it's to the point where I don't really listen to the regular radio stations you know I, I prefer to stream my music so kind of forced to upgrade the stereo everything else on here works fine it's just the tape deck so I'm going to be showing you the steps to how to remove the old one and how to install a new one. So let's go over to the workbench so I can show you the replacement. So this is the replacement radio right here and it's made by Boss. It's um, 320 total watts on four channels. Um, right here this is the item number and then at the bottom it just lists some of the key features here and I'll turn it on the back and um, oh it also comes with a review uh, or backup camera so these are all the features here and I'm not going to read through them you can pause the video and read through them yourself but I'm also going to provide links in the description so this is what all comes in the box. So this is the radio here, all right? Um, on the back, uh, as you can see, it actually, they labeled all of the wires. Uh, like this right here, this is uh, Bluetooth. It actually has two of those, there's one on the front too. Um, this one, this right here, this is for the microphone for the Bluetooth. Oh, I'm sorry. This is USB. And then these are the different ports uh, right here. And this is a touch screen. So um, this is the wire connector for the power. Um, this is the backup camera remote. Not sure why we need this, but um, it's nice to have. Um, this is the uh, video a cable for the actual backup camera. And it didn't have a description as far as the length of it, but I want to say it's probably about anywhere from 15 to 20 feet um, when I stretched it out. These are the mounting brackets for the actual radio itself. Uh, this is the Bluetooth microphone, which I'm not going to install that uh, because I'll just use my phone like I normally would, you know, when making phone calls. Owner's manual. And then this right here, this is uh, an adapter kit, which it has two connectors in here because on the factory radio, there are two connectors. So the way this is supposed to work, I'm supposed to be able to connect both of these um to the current connectors in our van which I'll show you that and then connect um, these to this one here because it's only one um, port on the back and that's this one right here so you know this one right here you know fits down in there Okay, so now let me show you how to uh, remove the old radio. So the very first thing that you want to do is remove one of the battery ter terminals off the battery so that uh, you won't short out anything. In my case, I just disconnected the negative battery terminal. Okay, so the first thing that we want to do is uh, remove the cup holder. So basically all you do is just pull it out and right under here there's a tab that you push down 
then you just pull the whole tray out okay and I'm gonna put that to the side and then right down here there is this piece right here um, this comes off and I'm going to use my panel removal tool to get up underneath there so I can pop this out oh Oh no, that wasn't it. That was actually, there we go. So you just need to start it and then, you know, just pull it off. Okay, so I'm gonna put that to the side. And then at the bottom here, there's a Phillips uh, screw here and then over here. So I'm going to just take those out. I'll tell you what Chrysler um, did, or Dodge, they actually did really good with making it simple to uh, take this off. So then all you do, so once those the screws are out, um, this comes right off. Let's see. Mm, let me make sure I took the right screws out. Oh, you know what? I think I took out the wrong ones. Because there's two sets of screws. Yeah, I did. Okay, so let me put these back in. There's two sets of screws. There's one. I'll show you there's two sets there so there's one here and then there's one right here and I took out this one and I believe it's this one here that I need to take out because it's supposed to snap right off so I'm gonna pause the video and then I'm gonna take those screws out okay so I'm just going to use my tool to just pry it out and then once you get it started, all you do is just kind of pop it, just pull it. And the one thing that you have to be very careful of is that there are wires and connectors here. Just let me show you what I'm talking about. So you see, you have the, these are the habit controls here, which I'm on a you don't necessarily have to disconnect these, but I'm going to. And it's the same ones with the red tab that you slide back and then you pull them off. And then there's also one. Uh, there's also one. Where is it? Right there. Uh, for the controls for the uh, wiper. So I'm going to go ahead and disconnect those and take this off. And then I'll be right back. Okay, so got the connectors off. And um, it wasn't all that hard. This one right here, this was probably the hardest one. And what I had to do was I had to take um, my screwdriver, uh, which is right. And what I had to do was... I had to bend it back like that on both sides and then move the lock back and then I was able to squeeze it and disconnect it. So, you know, these are the connectors here and pretty much all of them can be done by hand. So, this is um, pretty much what it looks like. Um, and all I'm going to do now is just remove these four screws here. And... You know, this is pretty much what the bezel looks like on the outside. And then this is the back part of it here. Yeah, so I'm going to put this aside here. And then let's uh, we go ahead and take the stereo out now. And these are um, Phillips screws as well.
And one of the things that I had to do was the radio that I bought. Um, I actually um, bought it from, um, oh man, I can't think of the name of the place now. Um, I think Sonic Electronics. But uh, anyway, they have where you can put your um, year and model in so that you can see what stereos would match. And that's what I did. That's how I came up with it. Um, so I'll just pull this out. Like so. And um, yeah, and that's the back of it right there. So I'm going to go ahead and disconnect all of this. And um, I'll be right back. Okay, so I've got the radio out, and these are pretty much all the connectors in here. I'm not sure what all of them are for, um, but they weren't too hard to uh, to get off here. Um, this right here is the antenna, and then the ground cable is right here, which it was... Uh, 10 millimeter ratchet that I had to use to take the screw out. Okay, so now I have the adapter kit right here, the wires for it, the connectors, and I'm going to go ahead and just, um, before I go any further, just to make sure that they're going to work. So I'm going to assume that gray goes with gray and black goes with black. All right, so let's see if these uh, actually work. Okay, there's one. And where's that black one? There it is. And also, just to let you know, uh, you see right here, um, there's a little notch right there. That's so that it locks, which there's, oh, camera focus. Um, there's a, a notch right here. And so when you put it together, and really it's only one way to do it, it locks. So the kit actually works. Okay, so now I'm gonna take the old radio and compare it to the new radio. Okay, so um, here's the old radio, and um, then there's the new one. So you can see that this one is a little wider, um, but it's shorter compared to the new one. Um, but as far as the top, uh, I would say they're pretty much almost the same length, yeah, for the most part. Okay, so... The next thing what I'm going to do is I'm now I'm going to connect, just push these out of the way. I'm going to connect these uh, together uh, to this one here. And the cool thing is, is that as you can see, they have these labeled. And I believe it's the same with these. And basically, you just match up the colors. Uh, from this one and this one uh, to this one here and let me show you um, the kind of connectors I'm going to be using so I'm going to be using these uh, butt connectors 18 to 22 gauge okay I just wanted to show you just how easy this is going to be so if you look on here and get my camera to focus 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 no uh, it's not focusing okay so um, this one says battery yellow and as you can see it's already been um, the, the insulation has already been cut and then also this one B 
which is for uh, battery as well. And you can look on here. Let me see, let me turn it around so that you can see. Uh, it doesn't say battery on here, but that's what the B stands for. So basically all I have to do is take this off here, have my butt connector. I'm actually going to twist my wire, insert it in here as far as it'll go. I'm going to take my uh, crimp wire cutters and oh, let's see here. So crimp that. Test it to make sure. This, that is in there good. Then I'm gonna pull this one off. So I'm gonna twist it. Now this one's a little bit longer. I think I'm gonna cut this down a little bit just because okay and I'm going to insert it in there hmm, this wire looks like it may be a little fatter than um, oh there we go okay then I'm gonna just crimp it down. And that's it. Okay, and then I'm gonna do um, the rest of them like that. Okay, so um, I'm done putting all the, connecting all the wires. And man, it took me almost like 30 minutes or so to do this. What I did notice that there are a few wires that um, I did not have uh, matches for. Um, one is right here. This one is, um, is it's the, oh, what does it say? Illuminated dash light, which I'm, I'm guessing that's what allowed um, when I um, dim the dash lights that that's what allowed the radio to dim. So I would I guess I won't be able to do that. And then also on the uh, over here we have the reverse, which I'm going to guess maybe I'll be able to connect that to the backup camera because of the way I'm going to hook that one up. I'm going to hook it up so that it actually um, activates when I put the gear shifter into reverse. And then let's see, um, here's one for a break. And then the ground, because there's already a ground cable in there, I'm gonna use that instead. I'm not quite sure if I'm gonna connect this one to it or not. I have to kind of see. Um, but then on the back of the radio, the new one, um, I have these three wires here which I'm not even sure you know if I need them or not so this is a key ground this is a key A and then this is key B so I'm not I'm not even sure if I need this and I looked in the owner's manual and it doesn't really mention anything about this so I think what I'm going to do is I'm going to just um, cap these off and if I run into any problems, then I'll investigate. Um, same with these here. Now, on the back of the stock radio, there was a connector on here. And then also over here, which I have no idea what they're used for. Let me show you. So these are the two right here. And like I said, I don't have any, there are no wires that um, are the same color. So I'm not even sure if I even need these or not. So again, I'm going to kind of just leave them. 
And, you know, I'm going to reconnect everything and just see what happens. Okay, so now what I'm about to do is I'm about to put the brackets on the radio. And the first thing that I have to do is I have to remove these off here. Because according to these, if these are not removed, the this player is not going to work because this radio actually does play uh, DVDs. So I'm going to go ahead and remove these off of here. Now, the instructions doesn't say that um, as far as the position, as far as which holes it is. So basically, what I'm going to do is I'm going to kind of mount it like, uh, eh, I guess kind of like right here. And I guess any of these screws would probably work. These holes will work kind of depending on um, the way the stock radio fits in. So I'll just put the screws in loose. So that that way, you know, all I have to do is just kind of adjust it um, once I, you know, fit it up um, inside. So it takes two screws in the back. And then you have your mounting screws as well on the front, you know, which I'm not going to deal with that right now because I have to first mount it. So, so basically, I'll show you what I'm talking about. So it's kind of going to go like this. Yeah, it's kind of going to go like this. So, as you can see, these are the mounting holes here. So, what I'm trying to do is I'm trying to mount mine um, the same exact way. So, I think what I need to do is I'm going to have to move this down, the bracket down a little bit. Um, so, now I need to remove the Havoc controls as well as the controls for the hazard and the rear washer and the way that they come out is you have uh, these star screws which these are a T10 uh, bit which is uh, right here so I'm gonna take these out um, and the reason why is because I'm actually going to modify the stock bezel to fit the radio. And in order for me to get the perfect fit, I need to remove these because I'm going to have to uh, trim inside here. And I'll show you the reason why once I remove these. Okay, so here are all the pieces um, removed. You know, you have your vents here the rear wiper controls and the Havoc right here and um, you know the bezel and um, in case you were wondering this right here this is a, a dash uh, kit that I installed on there that's another reason why I want to reuse this here and just modify it to um, fit the new radio so let me bring the bezel over that I have bought that's supposed to fit the radio okay so these are the bezels um, and for the most part they almost look identical here on the OEM one oh this needs to be clean uh, you see there's a, a texture on here whereas with the bezel that comes with um, the radio it actually didn't come with I had to buy this separate it doesn't have that on it also on the bottom what I noticed is in here you notice that there they put a little storage area there but on the original there's already one uh, being in there so um, 
you know, that's two things that I had noticed. The bottom part looks pretty much the same. Uh, as well as up here at the top, you know, this right here, I believe, is for if you have automatic climate controls, because I think the infrared sensor is like right here. So that's what that would be for. And then you got your vent controls. Okay, so I've uh, flipped them over. And for the most part, on the inside, it looks like pretty much everything lines up uh, pretty much the same. The only difference is you know is a space where the radio goes um you know is is different yeah so i know my challenge is going to be to fit it in here and i'm really hoping i can you know i'm not really sure that's why I, before i do any kind of cutting i'm going to do as much measuring as i can to you know see if i can if it'll fit in here Okay, so I just wanted to kind of give you an idea of what it would look like if you uh, chose to use the aftermarket um, bezel. So you see the habit controls, you know, do fit in there. Um, you know, there's a space for the radio. There's also a, um, a actual frame for it, which is uh, right here. I'm not sure if it fits in there, um, but this did actually come with the radio. And um, yeah, and they, all of this does fit in there. So um, yeah, so it shouldn't be a problem, you know, with it uh, fitting in the actual, you know, on the dashboard. Okay, so first problem I run into is, well, um, because of this right here, which this actually held the OEM radio in place um, and because the new one is much like fatter it doesn't fit in here so I have to make a decision if I want to modify this by cutting this out um, and the reason why I said that is because once I do that I can't put it back in here and if for some reason, if the um, radio doesn't work, I have no way of being able to go back to the stock one, at least for it to fit up in here. So I think what I'm going to do now is I'm actually just going to hook the wires up and at least see if the radio actually works. Okay, so... Um yeah, everything seems to work. Um, I have my key in. I have it in the auxiliary. Um, I haven't taken the label off yet because, you know, I want to protect the screen. I'll remove this once after I install it. Um, but here it is right here. And I haven't tested all of the functions on it. I just kind of playing around with it. But yeah um yeah it works yeah it's working so i guess now i'll have to figure out how i'm gonna trim the inside so that this can actually fit in there and like i said i'm just going to be prayerful about that one um when i do it so that i can get this in and that it'll actually work okay Okay, so um, I found another problem, and that is the uh, radio, the brackets on the side over here. If you see how I line it up on this side, and that's just the top one, it's total four. But then you look over there, and there's no way to extend um, these out. So... Uh, I have only two options to turn this, um, to switch this bracket or to use a whole bunch of washers, which that probably won't work because these screws are like really small. 
So I have to play around with that. The other thing is, since I'm going to be, um, you know, I'm going to have to trim this here. I noticed that there are a bunch of um, bolts and screws. So I'm going to try to see if I could probably just take this out and then take it over to the workbench and try to cut it that way, which will give me a lot more uh, room and at least I'm hoping. Um, so, uh, yeah, we'll, we'll see. It looks like I might be able to, um, but I'm not sure. Oh, you know what? No, I bet not because, oh no, there's screws here. Okay, so I'm gonna, I'm gonna try that and see what happens. All right, so I'm done taking measurements. It took me about, man, 45 minutes or so. So this is what, um, I'm doing. I'm gonna actually be cutting, uh, to this line here. And then this one over here. The outer line, this is the length of the OEM radio. And the inner one is the length of the new, the new radio. And then also this line right here is um, the um, bottom of the OEM radio. So I'm going to cut that out. Um, here and this whole thing isn't solid not all of it only certain parts of it the other cool thing is if I'm able to cut it out correctly I should be able to still have enough room and for some reason things just don't work out to be able to put the OEM radio back in because there'll still be uh, you know some of the plastic left because it, it fits like right in here and I guess it's just made so it doesn't move around so this is the tool that I'm going to be using um, to trim the bezel as well as inside of the dash and it's uh, right here it's a Dremel um, 2000 series uh, cutter and this is the cutter that I'm using here and I also um, have a drill bit this is actually a drill bit specifically to cut PVC and plastic it actually came with a kit that um, I had bought separate uh, from this I think this was uh, I don't know maybe about forty dollars or so but this is definitely uh, you're going to need you're going to need this so I'm done making my modifications to uh, the inside of the dashboard and as you can see here um, I end up you know cutting all this out you know it's not pretty but for my purpose it worked just fine um, I already fitted the radio in here so it does fit the other thing was is that um, I had to cut the plastic from right here off as well which is uh, this is it I'm right here let me turn it the correct way uh, oh yeah yeah like this so basically what this um, did was it it kind of fit like this up in here and it made it to whereas you know the stock radio would uh, you know be fitted in here so that it doesn't move um, okay so I had to customize the panel as you can see here this is the bezel and um you know i end up trimming this out it doesn't look too bad you know um i trim more than what i needed to but it does fit in which i'll show you that once i hook the radio up right now i'm gonna you know um, clean this out with soap and water as well as other pieces you know like um this right here is for the cup holder this is the storage compartment and um you know even the switches here okay so um this is where i am i made my modifications to the inside and i'm just test fitting now just to see how much i'm gonna have to uh, cut so um, as you can see, the bezel's on, but it's not on all the way because the bottom part here uh, needs to be trimmed, which I already knew that when taking all the measurements. 
and for the most part up here this part seems like it might clear not really sure and as you can see on both sides I uh, I'm gonna have to fill this in I think what I may do um, I may cut out pieces from the bezel the aftermarket bezel that I bought to fill this in on the side so let me just take this off so that you can kind of see so um, as you can see here you know I cut the brackets on the side and I was able to get one screw in on the bottom so as you can see here um, this this actual hole for the screw is covered so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna just drill holes right here and it should be stable enough in here because um, you know once I tighten up the screws on the side and this back here yeah it should be it should be good so um, I can't show you the inside right now because I got the screws in but it's coming along slow more work than what I thought but you know I'm making progress oh also another note because I was using my saw I accidentally my saw jumped and it cut one of the wires so I had to um, use a um, a buck connector to connect them back together so I'm hoping I didn't have any other problems with that so it's a good idea to um, tape all of the wires together just to kind of pr protect them from maybe you know rubbing up against uh, something and the protective coating coming off I didn't tape over the labels there and then also um, it's put good to put some end caps on the ones that you don't use um, these are uh, a 30 pack of a max gauge of 16 minimum gauge 20 so I um, went on ahead and I you know cleaned out the inside here as well as all of the other uh, pieces as well because they were all dirty and dusty and you know cup holder was kind of messy from you know cups that have been in there another thing you want to do is this is um, the wire the new one that goes to the radio and then you know right here are the, the adapters so what I did was I used some um, zip ties and electric tape just to you know kind of um, protect all the wires and then I put them through the hole here so when I put the radio in and take it out I could just you know push it back and the wires won't be in the way here this is the audio cable for not audio I'm sorry the video cable for the backup camera I'm not going to I'm going to install that at a later date but I still wanted to go ahead and you know put this in place so that I won't have to worry about pulling everything out um, later and as you can see you know it's coming down here so what I'm going to do is I'm going to wrap it up and then just zip tie it secure somewhere underneath the dash here okay so here it is I finally got everything back together and um, you know you see the little space on both sides here and I think I decided I'm just going to leave that the way it is actually I think it looks pretty cool you know especially since I painted the brackets um, and everything and yeah this is probably the only part right here that um, I may try to do something with but um, yeah there it is so um, let me go ahead and turn it on AC so that uh, AC power so that you can see All right, so here we go and there you go so uh, it was a lot of work but it was definitely worth it so anyway, if you have any questions, comments, or concerns, just, uh, you know, post them in the comments section. You guys have a blessed day.